Hey, I'm Adam, and today's project is going to be this really awesome sword. It's one piece of wood. The whole board costs three dollars, so you can make about three of them out of one piece, and it's a lot of fun. And don't hurt anybody. Now you are going to need a belt sander. This is a Ryobi belt sander. I got it from uh, Home Depot, and it's very big and heavy. You can adjust the speed on it here. And then the next thing you'll need is a coping saw. You're gonna need some uh, finish. This is a spray finish. And you can print out, in the description you'll see a page you can print out, and that gives you the shape of the sword. So you don't have to guess or measure anything. It's really easy. Right now, the wood you pick out is really important. If you pick a hard wood, it's gonna be very tough to make this. The wood you should pick should be a pine. It's very soft and easy to sculpt with a belt sander. Uh, you can get here from Lowe's, it costs three bucks. It's called white wood. It's just a very white colored pine. It works really nice for making swords because the contrast from the blade to the hilt is very sharp. Now this is just a regular pine board. You can see it's kind of almost pinkish on the top and that's a little lighter there but uh, it'll still work it's a little harder wood so it's going to be harder to sculpt but it's not going to look nearly as nice as if you get the white wood the white pine this board actually measures two and a half inches wide and that's what you're going to need by uh, three quarters of an inch well let's get to it first thing you have to do is print out the page you see in the description below there's going to be a link it's just one sheet you need to print and then cut it out you're cutting out the back of the sword and the tip of the sword. You'll see the dotted lines and the back should look just like this. Then you mark the center of the board and trace the hilt of the sword. It should look just like this. Anywhere from 16 to 24 inches is a good length for this sword. I'm making mine 20 inches long. Then trace the tip of the sword. Make sure that it's centered on the board. There is a horizontal line along the edge of the sword you need to trace two little markings onto. and we'll draw a connecting line from the hilt to the widest edge of the sword. You can make your sword any length you choose, but you will want to watch out for knot holes or maybe splits or imperfections in the wood. It's okay to make a sword with knot holes in it, it's just that that wood is a little harder than the rest of the wood, so it takes a little more time. Now we're going to cut it out and it should look something like this when we're done. If all you have is a coping saw, it'll still work fine. You might want to secure it in a vise if you have one. But a bandsaw is much better, so if you have one or know somebody who will let you use theirs, go for it. You don't have to be totally accurate if you make uh, wavy cuts and things like that, because you can fix a lot of mistakes with the belt sander. Now I'm drawing a line around the entire sword cutout. You want it exactly in the middle. I'm holding my finger very stiff and using it as a guide. Next, I'm drawing a line down the center of the sword on both sides. And finally, a couple lines across the guard of the sword. I'm going to use three different grits of sandpaper. 
Sandpaper is classified by grit, and the higher the number, the finer the grit, or the smoother the finish you're going to have on your wood. So I'm going to start with the roughest grit first, and this is going to take off as much wood as possible. This grit is a 40 grit sandpaper. Now I set my belt sander on automatic. It's just going to be free running. It's upside down and quickly I can remove a lot of material. I hold the blade in an angle and ride it back and forth along the belt sander. Slowly grinding down the edge of the blade. I'm careful not to go past the center of the blade. Just work slowly and flip it over again and again. Go back and forth from side to side and you'll get a feel for how it works. Then I'm going to press the tip against the belt sander and grind it down. It might look difficult, but it's really not that hard. And if you sand too much, you can usually balance it out on the other side. You can see I'm always holding it at an angle, so I'm not going past the middle of the blade. I want the two edges to meet in the center. Quickly your sword is going to look like this. It doesn't take much time at all with 40 grit sandpaper. Now on the handle I use the part of the belt sander that's not supported underneath where the wheel meets the metal plate because it'll give a bit and help me make a curve. Now I have my sandpaper a little off track. It's hanging over the roller a bit and that allows this part to work much easier. There's a little adjustment knob that you can use to do this. I just roll it around the handle and it puts a nice curve onto it. Don't worry if it's a little sloppy. You can uh, fine tune it later. The hilt of the sword is the handle of the sword and it's made out of a guard, grip, and pommel. The guard is the part between your hand and the blade. The grip is the part you're holding onto and the pommel is the knob at the end. Right here I'm sanding down the edges of the guard, make it a little narrower. And touching up the underside. I'm cutting a little line to define the pommel. Now I'm cutting a line to define the guard. By the way, when you're using a belt sander, you're definitely going to want to use earplugs as well. Now I'm changing from 40 to 80 grit sandpaper. Now when you rough cut your sword, the edge is probably going to be pretty crooked. You can just ride the edge of the blade along your belt sander. I'm doing it diagonally so I can get the most surface area. It's going to be a longer, flatter edge I can ride along to help make my blade straight. Then I clean up a lot of the scratches from the rougher sandpaper. This is also fine tuning everything. It evens out all the rough edges. So basically with the 80 grit sandpaper you're doing everything you did with the 40 until you feel like it's enough. Now I'm changing from 80 grit to 120. This is the final sanding. I'm adjusting the tracking of the sandpaper. And now I'm looking for any rough edges and sanding them all down. Also I'm going to put the edge on the blade. Now this is a kid's toy so I really don't want it that sharp. So. I'm going to round the edges down, but you could actually sharpen it up pretty good if you wanted to. And that's enough of the sanding. It looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. The lines look nice and clean. 
here it is came out really nice really lightweight super easy to carve so now on to staining now always test your stain on a scrap piece of wood stain works best when you apply a coat you let it dry a bit and then you apply another coat if you want it darker so don't worry about it if it's not dark enough on the first coat also the stain will have a tendency to want to bleed it'll soak into places you don't want it so it's not a big deal try not to to get it everywhere I wrapped mine in a piece of brown paper just to help uh, not get splatters all over the blade okay now I'm gonna do a second coat because I want it a little bit darker I'm done staining but you see there's a little bleeding I'll have to sand down with the belt sander It's 55 degrees outside and 50% humidity, so let's see how fast this shellac will dry. It says it dries in minutes. So I'm going to shake it up and give it a coat. The more coats of shellac you put on, the more shine it will have. It'll look better. Walk around the other side, spray it again. And wait a few minutes, and it's dry. It actually is. In the summer, it dries really fast but only a few minutes and it's uh, dry now. So spray it again, flip it over, and spray it again, and flip it over, and spray it again, and flip it over. It takes a lot of coats. And here's the finished product. It's all shiny and ready to play with. The kids love these things, so if you make one, make a lot, because you can give a lot away as gifts, and uh, they're really fun. Also, in the next videos, we're going to be making shields. If you have a sword, you need a shield. This one's great because uh, it's for right or left handed. You don't have to switch them. And uh, here's another one, another style you can make. Also, we're going to make scabbards. So you got to have something to put your sword in and uh, hang it on your back. We're going to do some leather work there too. Also, here's a master sword that we're going to try and make. This one's in progress. But uh, it's a different wood we used with this one, and it's a bit bigger sword. Uh, a lot of fun. So anyway, if this has been a good video for you, please click like. And as always, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.